Uh, Senator Seward. I wish to take uh, note of the government's response to the Community Affairs Reference Committee inquiry into the growing evidence of an emerging tick-borne disease that causes a Lyme-like illness for Australian patients. Uh, yes, if you um, just uh, just give us a second, uh, Senator Seward. I understand the minister needs to table that. Uh, oh, I beg, I beg your pardon. You yeah. did say anybody else wants <laughs> to speak to government responses, so I yeah. was responding to that. Okay. Um, yes, minister. Thank you, uh, Deputy uh, President, uh, Acting Deputy President. I present the government's response to the report of the Community Affairs References Committee on its inquiry into the growing evidence of an emerging tick disease that causes a Lyme-like illness for many Australian patients and seek leave to have the document incorporated in Hansard. Is leave granted? Leave is granted. Senator Seward. Uh, thank you and I thank the minister for tabling uh, the response. This is a committee, uh, a report from the Community Affairs Committee and I chaired the inquiry. Um, for once I'm up here saying good things about the government and their response. So <laughs> I know that may shock some people but um, so, the, yeah, exactly, exactly. So this this uh, committee inquiry, if uh, people will uh, remember, was um, basically inquiry into the issues around the number of people that have a Lyme-like um, illness, and that um, uh, we had. We made 12 recommendations and we received evidence from, well, we received hundreds of submissions and received a lot of evidence from people that were affected by uh, Lyme like illness. Now, one of the great issues here is that um, people, those that are affected by Lyme like illness, for the fundamental basic issue was that people didn't believe that they were ill. Um, and, and we had a lot of evidence around um, doctors not believing them them being rejected. In fact, the AMA uh, made a very unfortunate statement as the president made a very unfortunate statement as we uh, started our committee inquiry. Um, so one of the uh, important things that has um, come out of uh, the inquiry was that people felt uh, heard and they uh, supported our recommendations. And now government has come a significant way in addressing uh, this issue and I do welcome uh, their response. It probably doesn't go as far as some people would like uh, to see it go, but I think there has been some significant um, process. And the one is that the government is now um, acknowledging, and they say in their introduction, that um, the government has gained a deeper appreciation and real concern for those Australians experiencing these chronic debilita de debilitating symptoms. Um, they go on to say that the government remains engaged with patient and medical community to continue to find, share and understand the evidence associated with this um, medical conundrum. So that, that's, that's actually really significant that they are now saying that they are um, looking at much more seriously at this issue. <laughs> I know some people have been frustrated, because I've been getting the phone calls and the emails from people, that the government has taken um, a little while to respond to the committee inquiry. But I think, and in fact, I know that they have been engaging with our with our rec recommendations for some time, and I will note I appreciate their update on the progress they were making. Um, so, uh, I think that the fact that the government is now making some progress here sort of makes up for the for the delay um, that some people see the government has made. Um, it's important that the government is now recognising, acknowledging that people are ill and are sick, and that is such a significant step in the right um, direction. I will say that the government in the report doesn't necessarily think that, while I believe people are ill, from my reading of their response, uh, they're not necessarily, they don't necessarily think the evidence there is there around whether the vector, whether it's caused by ticks, whether it's tick-borne. And I've got to say, the evidence that we received to the committee um, does, it does show that there could be potential for other vectors uh, there. So a lot of their response is termed around, well, there's not, there may not be the evidence around tick-borne, but basically we've got to find out what it is, is you know, how to summarise it in a couple of quick uh, sentences. So in terms of what the government also can, goes on to say in its response is that the Australian government through the Department of Health remains open-minded about the cause of the various complexes 
which manifest as constellations of chronic debilitating symptoms. The best outcome for patients is, is not is not draw conclusions based on the poor levels of evidence, but to consider each patient thoroughly in a multidisciplinary medical approach that makes the best use of, of clinical acumen and available diagnostic skills and terminology. So I think, again, we're making some, uh, uh, some uh, progress. They do go on to say in their response to our um, recommendations. Um, in, so, for example, in recommendation two, where we make a um, rec where we made our recommendation about the about recommending that the government increase funding for research, they make quite a lot of uh, comments around that in their response. But they say the um, the Australian government, through the Department of Health, recognising the need to direct funding to determine the cause or causes of the symptoms affecting these patients through research that is comprehensive, evidence based, and incorporates a multidisciplinary assessment. And that was one of the things that came very strongly out of our report, is that we need to be taking a multidisciplinary approach. So the government goes on to articulate that they have the, uh, along, the, MRM, the NRMRC um, has started this process called Targeted Call for Research, or as an acronym, you have to have an acronym for everything, TCR, and that um, the minister has announced that they um, they will hold um, the the NH and MRC will hold a TCR um, on this topic in 2017-18, and then then go on to say that there's been um, three million dollars allocated for research in uh, uh, under that particular in the TCR process, and um, and they think that there will be a, a significant response to the concerns of patients who are seeking answers to their medical um, conditions. We also made a lot of co some comment in our report around the terminology, because, and we also recommend that we don't call it Lyme-like anymore, um, and any of the words that are basically associated with the Lyme-like illness, because it it, it puts uh, it doesn't adequately describe what's going on. And so um, the approach that they're now taking, they didn't quite agree with the terminology we suggested. Fine, but they are uh, taking the approach of calling it debilitating symptom complexes attributed to ticks. So in other words, we're going to start looking at these. At the moment, people think it's ticks because Lyme disease, classic Lyme disease, it's found in, in America and uh, European countries, is caused by ticks. We just haven't been able to quite prove that yet here. Although there's a strong belief there is, we haven't actually been able to prove it, but we know people are sick. We know that there are debil debilitating symptoms and that um, uh, this issue needs to be addressed. So I'm really pleased uh, to see um, that that research is um, going ahead. Um, they've also agreed, as I said, to the to the funding. Um, the Australian government uh, recognises the need to direct funding to determine the cause and, and cause or causes of the symptoms affecting these patients through research. As I said, again, is comprehensive, evidence-based. Um, they're also looking at, and I take it from their recommendations, that they also realise that other, vector, uh, other vectors uh, could be um, involved. Um, they um, then go on um, to, talk, to talk about our recommendations. Our recommendation um, six is, is addresses the issues around uh, the federal, state and territory health agencies through the, the Council of Australian Governments Health Council develop a consistent national approach um, to addressing tick-borne diseases, and they make comments in terms of the fact that um, they have. The, sorry, um, the Department of Health would support consideration of a national approach via, a co uh, right, via the Council of Australian Governments Health Council. Um, and the Australian uh, Adv Minister's Advisory Committee to the comprehensive multidisciplinary management of these debilitating symptom complexes. And the government, but, however, they do emphasise the need for an open mind and causality. In other words, again, moving away from whether it's tick-borne to look at what other vectors or causes may be involved. They've also um, published already in response to our recommendation around the need for uh, recommendations around the prevalence and ge geographical distribution of overseas acquired Lyme disease, because there are cases of classic Lyme disease in Australia that were acquired overseas. 
Um, they have already, um, through the Department of Health, published a guideline on overseas acquired Lyme disease, which is publicly available. Um, they um, also support our recommendations around uh, assistance to patients and particular, and, and particular the need for a comprehensive uh, approach and a multidisciplinary approach. Um, in this, as I said, we have waited a little while. Um, I'm sure some people um, think the government should have gone further, but I think this is a comprehensive response, and I do um, support. I, I do congratulate the government and say thank you to the government for responding in a meaningful way. And let's keep the momentum on this um, issue. It needs to be addressed, and I beg the government to please keep going um, on this issue. Help the people that are suffering from these debilitating symptoms. Thank you, Senator Seward. Senator Reynolds. Uh, thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Uh, I too rise uh, to uh, thank the government for their response on this uh, Lyme-like disease inquiry. Uh, it's not very often, I think, that uh, you get two reports in a row in this place where you get uh, Senator Seawitt and myself in thunderous agreement um, and support of uh, committee recommendations. But it is a pleasure to work, and it has been a pleasure to work on community affairs where we do deal with so many heartbreaking and intractably sad issues. And it's wonderful to see that almost inevitably we come up with um, bipartisan uh, reports. It gives me particular great delight to read uh, the government's response to this report. I also participated in this inquiry before and after the last election. And it was an utterly devastating experience listening to the personal accounts of those people who are clearly desperately ill, their families, their carers, and those who had survived uh, suicide attempts, and the families of those members who had, you know, were successful in committing suicide, because the agony of two things, the agony of their illness itself, but also the agony and the, the trauma in being so sick but not having anybody believe that they were sick and treat them as psychiatric patients, patients or treat them in many other different ways, which not only forced them, um, very sick people and their carers, to go around to sometimes hundreds of doctors here and overseas to find a diagnosis and to find treatment. It was utterly heartbreaking. And I know myself, um, Senator Seawett and other senators on the committee, even though an election uh, interrupted the course of this inquiry, that we got to the point where we, did, where we made the report that we did. And as Senator Seawitt said, it has been a very long and a very torturous process for those people who have made submissions and for those who followed the course of the inquiry so closely. And while it has taken a few months, quite a few months, for the government to formally respond, I am just so happy for the thousands of people who have debilitating illnesses, which may or may not be classical Lyme disease. But the fact that this, the government of Australia, that the Minister for Health has said, we have heard you and we believe you. We have heard you and we believe you. Those are four profoundly important words to these sufferers and to their families. And I think it's the first way in starting to change the way that these patients have been treated, not treated or maltreated by the medical profession in particular. Um, it seemed to me that there was some form of Stockholm syndrome or hysteria with the medical practice that if anybody had, you know, had come and said, look, I got bitten by a tick, or I may not have been bitten by a tick, but you know, I've got a, a uh, um, bullseye rash, or I've got these symptoms which may be this, um, that they were immediately treated by so many medical professionals as hysterical, as mad, um, and something requiring some form of psychiatric treatment. So the medical profession itself, I think, must, and with the leadership of the AMA, must take a fresh look at these patients. Undoubtedly, some of them, you know, who have been overseas in particular, will have classic Lyme disease. As we heard in the evidence, there are many other forms of, of vector-borne diseases that it could be, but again, the research has not been done. 
Um, we heard because of their, the way that patients were treated, quite often they weren't treated for other diseases and illnesses that um, has, could have similar symptoms. And so people may have had MS or other diseases which the medical profession never truly looked into. So as Senator Seawood has gone through uh, what the, gov the government's uh, position on this, I would urge, I thank the minister and his staff who have been so engaged in this and genuinely looking for a way forward and to working and sometimes pushing their own department to get to this, to arrive at this position. But I would ask all who get involved in this round table now in, early in the new year to come to this with a fresh approach. Put aside labels, put aside uh, prejudices, put aside assumptions about what this may or may not be. Go to that forum with the intent to have a look at mm. the symptoms that these people present with. Listen to their stories and start a fresh diagnosis. Sometimes it might be in the early, in the early months and years that more, uh, more effective treatment um, can be provided to ease pain and to make the quality of life better. But there is no doubt that more research is required to actually identify what these illnesses are, what the pathogens are, what the bacteria or the viruses are, and then start finding effective treatments for these people. So in conclusion, Mr Acting Deputy President, I thank all of my colleagues and again Senator Seawert for her tenacity and her leadership of this committee and of this inquiry. It's one of those inquiries um, and this report today and, now, and the government's reply to this report is something that I think all of us in this place can be very proud of. It will make a difference to many people's lives, to people who were not believed, who were not listened to and who were quite simply desperate. So to all of you I say this is the next step and here in this place we do believe you. We do want to find answers to your illnesses and I just hope that the AMA and the medical profession more generally go in with a fresh set of eyes and ears and look after these patients because we've put them through enough. Thank you. Thank you, Senator uh, Reynolds. Continue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Senator Dastyari. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Um, thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Um, just rise to provide a few brief comments regarding the Community Affairs References Committee's inquiry into the growing evidence of an emerging tick-borne disease that causes a Lyme-like illness for many Australian patients. Just very briefly, Mr Acting Deputy President, and I won't keep the, um, the, the Senate waiting uh, too long. This inquiry commenced almost two years ago and was re-adopted at the start of the current parliament. It, in that time, it attracted significant public interest with over 1,200 submissions received, many of them from Australians who are experiencing chronic debilitating symptoms that they associate with a tick bite. The committee included coalition labour and crossbench senators and tabled its final report on 30th of November 2016. Uh, the government was required to respond to the committee reports within three months of their tabling. Uh, this response has taken 12 months, four times the allowed period. This follows the six months that it took the government to respond to the committee's interim report, after which the government provided a two-page response. Look, at long last, Labor looks forward to having an opportunity to review the government's response, and this response uh, on face value appears more substantial than its previous attempts. Uh, I hope that this does justice to the, uh, the, the many people and the many issues that have been raised as part of this inquiry. <laughs>